Southern side dishes. Good night in the morning. I love some Southern side dishes. I get asked all the time when I do my Thanksgiving lives, my Christmas lives, you know, I'm always showing my groceries off, right? Hussy, where's the recipes? Well, I'm sorry, I don't have the recipes. I'm fixing that. We got the holidays coming up. You know, now's a good time to really reveal this. So today, three awesome side dishes that will just blow your mind away. You put it down in front of everybody, even people you don't like. They're gonna love it. And they're gonna kiss you right on the lips. Maybe not the lips, maybe on the cheek, but, or on the forehead. Today, we're gonna do three awesome side dishes for your holiday gathering, for your weekend gathering, you know, like grandma used to have on the Sundays, on the Sundays, like grandma used to have on Sunday dinner. Our first recipe that we're gonna start out with is some old collard greens. I love collard greens. Not do you like collard greens, Jacob? They're okay. They're okay, of course. He don't like collard greens, but hey, I'm gonna show you how I do my collard greens, the way I like to do them, and they're fire, y'all. I'm telling you, people dig these things. I got a sink full of, come on in here, Jacob. I already got, uh, I got three bunches of these collard greens. I like generally growing my own collard greens, but uh, you know, just go to the store, get you some. You can get the bags. I, I'm not a fan of the bags, but if I'm in a pinch, I will use the bags. And I'm gonna tell you why right here in a minute. But there's a, these are collards, these are whole collards. And one thing you gotta make sure you wanna wash them for one, because generally they're grown where some sand is like Georgia, North Carolina, you know, in the Sandy Sand Hill region, that's where a lot of these collars are grown. Um, thick stalk coming up right here. I like to strip them, okay? Just basically take my fingers and strip these things. And the cool thing is, is they got this rubber band around them typically, and I just kind of work my way around this rubber band. Well, that one didn't work out all that great. But if it don't, if it's tender enough, I just don't like that stalk, and that's what happens with the, uh, what happens with the bag they leave this a lot of these stalks in so they just kind of chop them I don't, I don't like it i just don't like it so i've i've done some of these already and again we're just taking these taking the stalk and just kind of coming up just like that and perfect i'm gonna do the rest of these and i'm gonna pull you right back in we're done stripping y'all now it's time we got to get them processed and i just like to this, don't be alarmed, y'all. This is gonna cook down to about, it's like spinach. It's gonna cook down, it's gonna have one serving. Just one serving. Not really, you're gonna have a little bit more. Y'all, I love some collars, man. I'll eat these dang things just a lot. And they're just so good. This is a very critical step right here. One other thing, one other thing, forgot to tell you this. Come over here, Jacob. I got a pot over here on the, on the, on the stove. I like to par bull my greens, okay? Some people don't. Um, this is what my mama did and I just got some water and we're gonna salt it and this right here kind of takes a little bit of the bitterness off makes them makes them nice and nice and tender to where you can cook them later on okay just one step you don't have to it's not needed but I prefer it Jacob come in here for a little bit so you can see the the vein runs right there that vein I mean that thing is it's, it's kind of hard. So one thing I like to do is I like to take that out and that just makes a very, very delicate uh, leaf that you know, you're not gonna, it's not gonna stick into your dang teeth. Just, you have all leaves, nice and delicate. Some of them like this, you may not have to do it. You know, it's just, it's just kind of up to you. Once you do them for a while, you'll figure it out. So I'm gonna do these, take these veins out I'll come back to you, all right? All right, now comes the fun part. And I don't really take a whole lot of uh, time doing this because, well, you don't really need to. I grab, I just grab a bunch of collards from your pile and I'll just run my knife right through it. Just like that, okay? And then I don't really take a whole lot of time to do it. Again, another whole big pile roll them up just like that and then 
just kind of come in and make manageable pieces. Don't draw back no nubs. Okay. Our water over there is up to temperature. Not up to temperature, it's boiling. Okay. Let's see if I can take all these over there. All right. Let's go over here. Come on, Jacob. Let's go. All righty. Water's boiling. We got salt in there. We want to make sure it's nice and salted. And we're not looking to really cook these. We just want to par cook them, blanch them. Some people might call them a, a blanch, nice blanch. Uh, yeah. This just kind of takes a little bit of the little bit of edge off these bad boys. Okay. We put a pile in. Bring a next pile. Bring a next pile. Just like that. Push them down into that water. They start turning a nice, look at that nice deep green right there. That's so beautiful. Love, love, love some collard greens. All right. We're gonna let those go for about one minute and then we're gonna drain them. It's been about a minute. Let's get these off of the stove. Pour these over into the sink. Now I'll tell y'all one thing. This is what uh, what we do sometimes is after this we'll pack them, pack them up, and uh, put them in freezer bags. But you can also fry these dudes. Fry them up uh, like some fried collard greens and some bacon fat, especially if you got some hog jowl. After some hog jowl, you fry these things in that stuff. Good night. Y'all, that's some good eating. Get all these out because we got other things planned for this here pot. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna let these things, I mean, right now, these are good. These are, these are perfectly fine right now. You can eat them. Mm. Oh man, they're so good, they're tender. Hadn't cooked down, they need some more cooking. But they're good just like that. If you wanna go ahead and saute those on your black stone, mm, that's good too. So maybe we'll do that for, maybe we'll do that for like uh, New Year's Eve or something. Put this back onto the stove. Put it on about a medium heat. I need some, uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of, you could do one or two things here. You can do, uh, you can do some bacon, uh, chop up some bacon. I know you really like bacon too. Uh, or you can do some bacon up, you can do butter. Sky's the limit here, y'all, really. Um, I'm gonna use bacon up. I like using bacon up. You get, the, you get the taste of the bacon because we got some other good stuff to put uh, in this as well. We got, we're gonna do a little onion. I like onion. Oh yeah, over here. I forgot about these. Some smoke, some ham hocks. Smoked ham hocks. We're gonna do those also. I'm gonna slice up an onion. Just, just not, I mean, you don't really have to be exact on this. I'm talking about just run through it just as fast as you can, okay? Cause it's just going to cook down. You're just looking for the flavor, really. Just going to come in just a regular old dice on these dudes. Old ham hocks. These are, if you, just get these at the store. Uh, you can do turkey necks. You can do turkey legs, smoked turkey legs. Uh, I like doing ham hocks personally. I like to come in and I like to score these, okay? Just come in. It just kind of, and that way it helps, it helps break up the meat. There's not a whole lot of meat on these, but you're just getting that flavor, okay? And eventually some of the meat will break down and that will get into your collard greens. Damn, those ones. have I said I like collard greens? All righty, there we go. All right, Jacob, let's go over to the cutting board. So we got our bacon grease over here. Oh, forgot my bench scraper. <coughs> okay. A little bit of onion right there. Again, nothing too crazy. Oh yeah, it's right here. A 
We just want to sweat those down a little bit. Okay. A little bit of uh, a little bit of salt that helps break break the onions down. Helps uh, kind of make them sweat a little bit better. Do a little cracked pepper. If you like a little heat with your collards, you put in a little bit of red pepper flake right here. Helps, uh, a lot of people do like the heat. Sometimes people will put hot sauce in there. It's just, a, you know, just all kinds of things. Here I like to put our ham hocks. Put those in there as well. Like to get those, uh, I like to get some heat on those, okay? And some of that fat, cause it's got some fat on it, kind of helps uh, caramelize. That's just some flavor right there, okay? We're gonna cook these ham hocks, these onions, just a little while longer. And then we're gonna put our uh, put our collards in. We're gonna let them rise for about an hour or so. It'll be some good collards, I guarantee it. Best you ever had. All right, our onions have sweated down really nicely. You can kind of see right there. I actually did put a little bit of red pepper flake in there because, well, I was just feeling, I was feeling a little spicy. A little spicy. Mm, smells good. Put those greens in there, okay? Here's where the magic happens right here, okay? So we got a little bit of, we'll put a little bit of salt in there. We're not gonna worry so much about salt right now. Um, we can salt, we can adjust a little bit later, okay? We are gonna, I like to cook these. This is, uh, this is just some unsalted chicken stock. I like using chicken stock and also like using the unsalted variation also because, well, you just don't want to add salt. You, you wanna control your salt, okay? And that's just what it all boils down to. Then I want to come over here to the sink, put a little bit of water. You want that richness of the chicken stock, okay? But you just don't want the salt. You can put the salt in later. So you want to be in control of the situation, okay? Don't let that chicken stock be the deciding factor of your awesome greens. You don't want it to be salty like Jacob. Jacob, he's so salty. There we are. All right, now this Cause this has salt too. This is some good stuff. Get y'all some of this. Nor chicken powder, okay? Chicken flavor bouillon, actually. This stuff is awesome. All right. And you can see, you don't wanna go too far uh, higher than that. Your greens are gonna release a little bit of its water, its moisture, okay? And that's basically it right there. Mix that up really well man you got some flavor in there got those ham hocks got that onion you know got the got that bacon up some rendered bacon that's really all it is we're going to let this go for well, about 30 minutes and then we're going to check on it it's just about i want to say an hour to two hours total all right green bean casserole if you was to ask my wife right now what is your favorite side dish for the holidays? Or really, probably maybe for everything. Well, she does like a tater. She loves this green bean casserole. So this is for you, dear. I love her. She loves some green bean casserole. I love her. I love green bean casserole too. But there's other things that I like maybe a little bit better on the holidays. We're going to get started with some celery. Uh, don't use a whole lot of celery but I just feel like it adds a nice little element, okay? So I just get take, eh, this is one stalk and I messed up and I was being stupid and it broke. So, so just come in, stack all of your little stalks up. That's actually a little bit too thick. I mean, I want it really, really small where basically it don't even show, okay? Stack them up like all kinds of little, little doggies and just run your knife through those. You can kind of see that's a really small dice. You don't want Uncle Edward coming in and getting a big old hunk of celery. And you know he don't like celery. He always got that guy. If you don't like celery. I know Uncle Edward. I don't know. But you're eating it anyway in that green bean casserole. All right, got you a little bit of celery right there. Okay. Not a whole lot. You got a little onion. On your own, okay. Same thing with it. You want this dice to be 
relatively similar to your celery. Why can't they invent a skinless onion? What do you think? That'd be pretty cool. Like if they, I mean, they do like skinless cats and stuff, you know? So why not a skinless onion? All right. Nice sharp knife. Just like that. I don't know if we'll need this all or not. You want a, just a small onion, okay? All righty, just like that. Come in with a horizontal and just run it through. Just like that. Boy, look at that right there. Bring your knife, just kind of run your knife through. Just get some rogue. Sometimes there's just a rogue piece that you didn't get, okay? All right. Boom. Now, one thing that I also add to my green bean casserole is some mushrooms. What I like is it adds just a little bit of depth. Is that really, is that what it adds? I think it's like a depth element. Um, add some moisture. Uh, it just, I don't know, it just goes really well. These are just whole Bella mushrooms. Okay, we're not gonna do a whole lot. Maybe two, these are good size. Okay, I'm just gonna stack those up like so. Run your knife through. And that's pretty much all of our prep. Uh, I like to use a French style green bean. If you wanna use fresh, you can. And we're just gonna drain these dudes. Get some of that canning liquid off. The fresh, it's okay, but I'll be honest, we like the canned version. So somebody's gonna be in the comments. Dude, that sucks. Chill out, man. Just chill out. All right, we got, I think we got everything prepped, Jacob. We just need to go over here to the stove and we need to get some business. We need to get down to business. Ready to get down to business? Let's go over here to our stove. Y'all remember them dang collard greens? Boy, look at them things. Whew. Hold on a minute, that's hot. Take a little peek in there. Oh man, look at that. That's a collard green facial. Whew. I love it. Get me more. All right. I need some butter in here. I don't have any butter out. Butter, oh, right here, right here, right here it is. Stay right there. Cream cheese. We'll use that cream cheese later. Good old Kerrygold butter. Love this stuff. I'm gonna throw a big old hunk of butter in there. I need to up my temperature. Okay. Get that down. Look at that nice color. Old grass fed cows. All right, we got our hunk of butter. It is down and ready. I'm gonna take a little bit of our onion, maybe about half a cup, about a quarter cup of our celery, and then our mushrooms. And this is gonna cook down. Just really, I really, really, really like this. Stir that around. We'll add a little bit of salt. It helps brick break down stuff, helps get the moisture out, starts caramelizing a little bit. All right, we're just gonna saute this for about a couple minutes. We want everything to be nice and soft, all right? Go ahead and pre-warm your, uh, your oven, about 350 degrees, cause it's gonna go into the oven and you want it to be nice and hot, okay? It's been about two to three minutes. Check out those vegetables. They look great. We're gonna come into these with our green beans. Now you don't wanna get at this like the dang thing owes you money. You wanna be really caring for this. You don't wanna break up your strands of the green beans as much as possible. So again, just be delicate. Just be real delicate. Don't, don't get at it, okay? Mix all that in really well, okay? Now we're gonna come in with our cream of mushroom soup. Maggie wants some green bean casserole. You just wanna make sure you have nice, nice and creamy. Gotta go in with a little bit of flavoring. And again, I use this chicken, bou chicken bouillon. I like to use a little bit of that, okay? Really, really amps up the flavors. Um, and then also, I got some chicken stock in here, Jacob. Wanna add just a tear of chicken stock. Just to try to 
break that down just a little bit. A little bit thick right now. That's perfect right there. Now we need to try this because you want to try it. You want to taste as you go. Okay. Taste as you go. That is a rule of mine. Okay. Just take a little bit. You want to taste it. What's it taste? It's got good flavor. Need some salt. One thing I do like to add some some wash wash little wash your sister sauce. How about that? Just a little tear. Just a little tear. This W sauce right here is really good. That adds a little bit of a just a little dynamic, very thick, rich flavor. All right, next element that I like to do, I like to add cheese to mine. This is just some just old ordinary, uh, what is it? It's Fiesta blend. Yeah, it's got Monterey Jack, cheddar, queso, quesadilla, and asiato, and it's good. Uh, put a little bit of cheese on there. I also put some more on top whenever it's cooking. Just makes it nice. Adds another dynamic. All about layering the flavors. Need some more. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. What do you think? Yeah, that right there. All right, we're gonna let this cook for just a little bit more and we're gonna put it into their oven. Green bean casserole, it's setting over there, it's ready. We gotta put it in the oven. We gotta have a little topping on it. Now, here's where I differ from a lot of Southern folks. A lot of people put those, uh, I think it's a French's fried onion, onions on top. I don't like the French onion. I don't like that onion, not French. French's onions. I like to do a little panko topping, okay? It's just me. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to do it. But I will say, I think it's a little bit better. So I took a cup of panko, and to that I'm going to put about a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, okay? Mix that up. Now we're gonna take just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. This right here will help it brown, okay? Let's go over here to our pan, and we're just gonna put this pan, we're just gonna put it right into the oven, and Bring your topping. You wanna to make sure you get side to side. You don't want Aunt Dorothy, Uncle Mark coming over talking trash about your panko game. Uncle Mark, Aunt Dorothy, my panko game is on point. Put that sucker into a 350 degree oven, just like that right there. Uh-oh, I got a dang thing. I got a pan in there already. Jeez Louise. There, it's hot. All right, now, put that sucker right in there like that. About 30 minutes, you're gonna have a green bean casserole. All right, our next recipe, it's actually the last recipe, so I saved the best for last, mac and cheese, baked mac and cheese. Now, some Southern folks, they just like just a pot of mac and cheese, non-baked in a pot. Uh, that's what we grew up with. Uh, and then there's baked mac and cheese, which later on in life, I realized people bake mac and cheese and uh, I didn't know that and I felt just way weird, but uh, I like them both. Today we're doing a baked mac and cheese and I'm gonna show you how I do it. What I have over on the stove right now, I have uh, one box of macaroni. Uh, I like using the ridged uh, jumbo elbows. Uh, I have one pound and this is just some salted water that those are in right there. Remember those greens are still working over there. So we got the greens, we got the green bean casserole, got the mac and cheese all going. There's a little bit of prep involved with our mac and cheese. I like to use a plethora of cheeses. One is, I do mild cheddar. If you wanna do the sharp cheddar or extra sharp, feel free, Let's go right ahead. Uh, I just use mild cheddar. And I like to grate my own cheese. Truth be told, I don't always do it. And you don't have to. But if I really wanna put the time into it, I'll grate my own cheese. Just. It just does, it just turns out a little bit better, I feel. But honestly, I just don't think somebody will know. But I know I'm gonna catch some flack for that. But. So this is one, that's a one pound block. Don't know how much we're gonna use. Get your forearms working out here. Colby Jack, Colby Jack, old Colby. He's a good boy of mine, good old friend. And old Jack, he's a good old boy too. Won't we'll grate them too. Colby's a really good melting cheese. Uh, Monterey Jack is also kind of creamy. 
We got Monterey Jack, got a little bit of Colby. Now we're gonna do some little Gouda. I generally like non-smoked Gouda, a little bit of Gouda, about four ounces or so. We got a little bit of Parmesan cheese also. Oh dear Lord. And then uh, I like to use some cream cheese. So we got four, five, six things of cheese going on in this mac and cheese. Like I said, we're pulling out all of our stops. This is some good dang mac and cheese, all right? We're gonna wait for them noodles to be done. They're not done yet. It's been 30 minutes. Our green bean casserole is talking to us. It says, I'm done, hussy. Ooh, look at that right there, y'all. Bring that over here. Put this right there. All right, let's get our noodles off. Woo! Get that macaroni facial. Just strain those noodles off. I'm not gonna wash them. Now we're gonna make a little roux. A little roux, like roux McClanahan. We're gonna add a hefty amount of butter, about a quarter cup, maybe a little bit more. There we go. We're making a roux here, okay? This is gonna be uh, the base for our cheese sauce. We've got some all-purpose flour. We're gonna add about equal parts, not quite equal. We want this to be a loose gravy, cheese gravy, okay? Quarter cup flour, quarter cup of butter. Maybe just a hair more, I added a little bit more butter. All right, there we go. With any roux, you wanna cook it. Gotta cook your roux. Our roux's cooked, I guarantee. When you start smelling, it kinda smells like biscuits. Uh, that's, you kind of know that your flour's cooked pretty good. All right, we're coming into this mixture with some half and half. About four cups total is what you'll need. I'm gonna do a little whizzy whizzy before anybody says these pots and pans can take metal utensils. I know people get banana shape about it. I didn't really measure much, but you can just gotta trust me, four cups. We'll have a full recipe probably down below or on the website. I don't know if y'all know or not, Hussy's got a website. Thehungerhussy.com. Check it out. You can get you some heifer dust from there. Get you some fiesta dust from there. It's pretty awesome. I'd like to use this moment just to, just to taste this. Mm. That's good. Um, not, really, not really much of nothing. Just to try to taste, make sure number one, your roux was good and it's good. Um, just like, like a creaminess, because we're gonna add some more goodness to this right here in a minute. All righty. Again, this ain't gonna be very tight, and you don't want that. But you're gonna see, you might have to add a little bit more milk, half and half, as you go. So we're gonna start putting in our cheese. We're gonna come in with our cheddar first. Then the old Monterey Jack. We're gonna save some of this for the top of our mac and cheese. So don't use all of it. There's our Gouda. Oh, Gouda. All right. Now we're just gonna start stirring that up. Well, that's a gooey mess right there. I'd like to jump in that. Big old cheese pool, come on. It starts tightening up a little bit. What do you do? We just add a little bit, of, a little bit more milk. Okay, once everybody starts getting nice and cheesy, it'll thin out. Now we gotta talk about some seasoning here, okay? We haven't seasoned this at all, and I go pretty simple. Salt and some pepper. Uh, a lot of people wanna get a little crazy. A lot of people get crazy with seasoning. They wanna put some nutmeg in it, like, ooh, some dried mustard. Ain't really many Southern people putting that stuff in their mac and cheese, y'all. Just wanna let y'all know, okay? We'll put a little bit more of that, a little bit, little bit more, half and half. Now we're just gonna stir this around. Maggie is right up under us to make sure we're doing everything in our capacity to her standards, okay? There we go, look at that. Dang, son. Jacob, I think that's good, my friend. You know what we're gonna do now? We're gonna add our macaroni. So our macaroni, it's been over here just hanging out. And I don't like to wash it. 
uh, because it washes some of that starch off. Okay, put that pound of macaroni in there. Now we're just going to stir this all around. This is where the good stuff happens. Don't really need any heat anymore. So that residual should be fine. I like to use this time. This is a taste test. You always taste test. Just going to try it. Make sure we got enough salt. Make sure we got pepper. Dang. 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 That's good. That's real good. Sheesh. Man, I like what that, I like what that Gouda does. All righty. Now, we've got our pan over here. Maggie, making sure got our pan. We'll take some butter, put in our pan. Now we just want to make sure we grease the sides of our pan. I love these half hotel pans. Woo wee, that's hot. I should have known that because I put it right on a burner that was on. Yeah, go me. Now we're going to take this mac and cheese. Pour it right into our pan. Damn. Y'all, I messed up. I forgot. I don't really, I like to put Parmesan cheese and I like to put cream cheese in there. But it's not, it's not needed. It really isn't needed. You can, but you don't have to, okay? We're going to use... The rest of this for the top. And just going to lay all this on the top. Uncovered dish, uh, 350 for about 30 minutes until that top. I mean, everything's done. You want that top to be nice and bubbly. All right, guys, let's take a look. My mac and cheese is done and I, I did not just to make sure everybody's, I just put it in the oven and keep it warm. We were doing another video and uh, so I put some foil over it so it wouldn't dry out. So first things first, green bean casserole. Okay. Next, mac and cheese. Okay. Boy, look at that mac and cheese. Dang, boy. Woo. Last but not least is our collard greens. All right, guys. Our three really awesome southern side dishes is done. I'm ready to give these a try. We're going to start here with this here mac and cheese. Let's see. Oh, boy. It's gooey. It's ooey. I used the wrong spoon for that, but whatever. A little bit of our green bean casserole. Look at that, a beautiful panko. Panko! These greens right here, y'all, I don't need that much. These greens, they're soft, they're luscious, they're amazing is what they are. Which one are we gonna go in for? I'm gonna wait for the last for that one right there, Jacob. We'll go for it, this is actually my personal favorite, collard greens. Mm. So tender. You get a little bit of the smokiness from the ham hock and from that bacon up that we put in there. Mm. They're just so tender. You get a little bit of the spice from from the uh, from the red pepper flake that we got, and it ain't much. Just just slightly. Man, the chicken stock. We're cooking in the chicken stock. That right there will level up your greens no matter what. Plus that chicken bouillon that bumps up the flavor also. I don't even need, a lot of people put vinegar on theirs, lemon juice. No, nah, not needed right here, homie. Green bean casserole. Mmm. Oh man, that's creamy. That panko topping, way better, way better than them onions, guarantee it. Mmm. My wife, she's gonna love me for this. Mm. Last but not least is mac and cheese. Unfortunately, we left out the cream cheese and the parm, but it's all right. It's good. Mmm. That's cheesy, buttery. Oh, so dang good. 
son. Mm. That right there is mac and cheese, if I ever seen any. Y'all, I have no doubt you fix these for whatever, your family gathering, for the holidays, Easter, Christmas, don't matter. Fix these, get a nice protein together. People will say you're awesome. And do you know what other people like? Bloopers. I like this. I like to strip. Just don't tell my wife I'm a stripper. Probably wouldn't make a very good stripper. I don't know. Maybe I would. Maybe I would. Maybe there's a market for big boy strippers. Yeah. Could give this to uh, give this to some chick, Jacob. Tell her. Uh, tell them you love them. Okay. Smell it, Jacob. No. No. Smell it. Smells bad. It smells terrible. Y'all don't go anywhere because we do have more recipes coming really good recipes so hang tight next one what are we doing next probably oh geez <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen all right <clears throat> that'd go good on the bloopers now we're going to come in with our should i put some chicken stock in here no a little cream of mushroom soup. Just a, whoop. oh geez Louise. Then we're gonna take some, just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. What's that? Her mother's calling me. Oh, you need to answer it. You know what I forgot? What? I forgot my cream cheese and the, and the darn uh, uh, Parmesan. Oh, yeah. Too late now. Dad, don't I always forget stuff. What? I get so engulfed. Woo, that's hot. That's hot, hussy. Woo, that's hot too. What are you doing? What am I doing? Dang, that's hot. Those greens are. <clears throat> I love greens anyway. Mm. Mm hmm. Man, oh, good.